So we might get started with some introductions. How about that? <laughs> um, I think um, we probably have just enough people here that we can actually give some verbal <laughs> introductions and not have to use the chat. So maybe we'll use, uh, we'll do that um, quickly uh, around the table and you can introduce yourself and um, let us know why you joined this workshop. Um, this is going to be hard because this always people always move around on my screen once <laughs> once people start talking. So I'm going to uh, suggest we start at my top left. So Italy, you're at my top left. Who are you? Where are you? And um, why did you join the workshop? <laughs> I guess. Uh, did you mean uh, myself, Itai? That's my name. Yes, Itai. Yes. Yeah, Itai. Uh, okay. I'm from uh, Israeli Academic College uh, for Engineering in Jerusalem. Uh, I'm the okay. head the, the, of the Center for Advancing uh, Learning and Teaching. And um, all, all the presentations, all the pitches uh, seem uh, attractive uh, the same way. Uh, uh, I came here because you didn't present the tool itself, but talked about the philosophy, so <laughs> this was my hook. <laughs> Great, excellent. Okay. Oh, good. Uh, I'm going to skip I'm myself also, and Shirley just... Gali. Uh, you're at the top right hand side of my screen. So hi, I, I do apologize. I will have to leave in the middle due to other obligations. I am from Shamun Academic College. Uh, we are an engineering college. And I uh, just thought it was the most interesting pitch. Okay. Oh, oh thanks. <laughs> okay, people are moving already. Um, Hella. Oh, and you're on mute. I'm from the Open University. I'm in charge of. Um, um, I'm in charge of all the uh, activities towards the Segel uh, the all the teachers uh, in all the professional development of the teachers in the, in the Open University. And I'm here because I like the idea of uh, looking at the teacher as a designer of the lesson. And I like, I think it's very important to use questions. So if I understood correctly, you have sort of a design or a, a model for this. So that's interesting. me. Terrific. Excellent. And Arik, you're next for me. Is this me? Uh, Arik. Arik. Oh, Arik. Arik. Okay. Arik. So, uh, everybody. So, uh, um, I study uh, for a master's degree in the Tel Aviv University uh, in the field of education and technology. I also teach uh, mathematics in uh, secondary school, uh, eighth grade. And uh, I think it's uh, very interesting uh, how to design the correct problem uh, with the right context. So uh, this is why I joined this one. Terrific. Good. Great. Kun, you're next for me. Are you there, Kun? Kun Liu, are you there? Okay, I'm going to skip over to Orit then. <laughs> uh, hi, everyone. So I'm Orit. I'm a PhD student at the uh, Learning and Technology program uh, at Tel Aviv University. Um, you managed to inspire my curiosity, I guess, from the same reason that were brought up earlier by someone else in this group. Uh, you know, the little questions that you put on the each of the three triangles, I think it was. I can't mm -hmm. remember now. Uh, I don't know, it just it's, it inspired my curiosity, the, the format of questions. I think it's really it's brilliant. Thanks. Interesting. Okay, Susanna. Oh, you're on mute, says that, Susanna. I'm going to yeah. unmute you. Okay. There you go, I did it. You did it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm Sus I, I understand that you're introducing yourselves, right? Okay, yes. so uh, I'm Susanna Galante and I'm from uh, Kibbutzim College of Education. I am um, a consultant at the Digital Pedagogy Unit there. 
and I'm also a lecturer on uh, how to introduce technology in the teaching of English in the English department. Great. Fantastic. Um, with, a large, uh, with a rich experience in high school, actually. Okay. So, and why did you join? I was, sorry? Why did you join this workshop? Uh, I was very much interested in um, uh, your outlook on uh, design. I uh, did my M MA in Education Technologies with Professor Kali, Yael Kali in, uh, at Haifa University. Mm -hmm. And um, part of my beliefs is actually exactly this, that teachers are designers, definitely. Okay, good. You, Tian. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Uh, I'm from Hong Kong U, the University of Hong Kong, and I'm a research assistant uh, in Nancy's team. Nancy, yes, I'm really interested in the problem generation tool you mentioned, but I, I want to try that. So I'm here. Thank you. Terrific. Great. Thank you, Tian. Kun, are you back with us? Kun Lu? You might have a, a voice. Uh, audio problem. How about Noah? Oh, there you go. <laughs> in our chat. Thank you for introducing yourself in your chat. And Noah just joined us. We're just saying who we are, where we're from, and why we joined this workshop. And if you want, you can let us know in the chat and we might get going on the presentation. So I'm Laurie Lockyer. You met Shirley Agostino earlier in the session. Uh, we've been working together with uh, our colleague Sue Bennett for a very long time. So <laughs> don't say hello. Shirley and Sue are at the University of Wollongong in Australia, and I'm um, just slightly north of them uh, in Sydney at the University of Technology, Sydney. Um, and um, Shirley's going to kick off our uh, workshop by introducing our approach. So we're very happy to hear that you're interested in some of the concepts that uh, Shirley talked about earlier um, and uh, a little bit about the LD tool. Over to you, Cheryl. Thank you. So what I think we'll do is that if you bear with me and give me about, I'll try and do it in about five or ten minutes, We've actually, I've actually created two videos that you can look at on that front screen where you came in on the Zoom. So I'm just going to go through and flick through some of those slides just to bring you up to speed quickly. And then you can access those videos in your own time after, after this. So the plan is that I'd like to present, um, just elaborate a bit more on the pitch that I gave uh, by giving and um, explaining where learning design, where we started our journey, our research journey with learning design and how that has evolved now into looking at doing actual doing research that's actually um, uncovering that teachers are actually uh, exhibiting design and thinking um, characteristics. So we'll, we'll talk about that. And then let's just play it by ear because we've organised a workshop for you with for one hour. But, you know, given that people can come and go, we'll just sort of play it by ear on how we can actually um, get you to actually interact with our tool and we'll talk about it. So uh, please, please bear with us if we're sort of adapting our design of this workshop as we're actually giving the workshop. So allow me to share my screen. And, okay. Okay. So, so as, as Laurie said, um, we've been working together for a long time. I'll actually say that it's almost, it's about 20 years that we've been working together. And this WordPress site is, uh, has access to uh, a whole range of um, uh, public, you know, our publications list uh, and outlines all our research. So please feel free. I encourage you to, to visit this WordPress site to learn more about that. Similarly, please, after this workshop, if there are any questions or comments, um, just send us an email. I'll say, I've, I've put my email address at the end. So we'd love to hear from you. It's, it's just so wonderful, a wonderful opportunity to, to be together today, to be sharing our work and talking about our research. So basically, where did learning design come from? 
Well, essentially, the the origins of this was that there was a call for quality. Well, there, there's been a call for, for a long time in higher education uh, about how to improve the quality of uh, it, the quality for higher ed, in higher education and also integrate technology. So um, what do we say, what do we consider learning design to be? We, we consider it to be an approach that provides tools to help educators design learning activities. Now you'll see from the team of people presenting today in learning design, it's the, the tools are slight, the tools are different and there's a slight difference in interpretation of what learning design is all about. And that that's and that's fine because we've all come from different aspects and looking at this area or this field in a different way. So essentially what we say is how we consider learning design is it's um, an approach that you can describe what, well, you can describe as teachers what you want your students to do. And essentially it's, and it's also a way of a, the learning process and how it's facilitated and supported. So this field of learning design has evolved over the last 20, you know, 20 odd years. And there's been a whole range of research and development work that's been carried out. There's been a, a range of repositories made, resources, and like this workshop today, a range of tools. And uh, the origins of these tools are that not only are they to be used for teachers to help them in to help them think about their teaching and their and learning um, and documenting their experiences, so helping them with their design work, but also a very strong um, approach to wanting to share with others. And based on the origins of learning design, a key idea was, well, if we share our ideas with others, particularly, for example, how to integrate technology, if we share it in a way that other teachers can easily understand, then, then they may be able to adapt those designs for their own context. So this is uh, essentially uh, the, a learning design approach that we have developed and that we're going to uh, get you to sort of think about and work with today. Um, so this or, or originated from uh, a project in the early 2000s, which was a Australian funded project to try and document uh, high quality learning examples that integrated technology and try to capture those and document them in a way to have enough detail that then um, it could be used by other teachers to have a look at that as a stimulus for ideas or inspiration for them to then adapt it. So essentially, if we break it down, um, our learning design approach is basically focusing on what the learners do. And it's based on a, a task-based approach, whereas you're, you're thinking about the tasks that you want your learners or your students to do. And with those tasks, then thinking about the resources that you're going to provide and how you're going to support your students to then ultimately help them achieve the learning outcomes or the intended learning outcomes that you uh, want them to achieve. So if we break that down in a bit more detail, you'll see that we came up with some symbols to represent those different aspects. So you'll see that the tasks are in the middle of the diagram. Then we have the resources on the left and resources we mean content resources. And you'll see there that I've we've stated it's either static or dynamic. These are resources that either the teacher provides or that the actual students make from the task that then can feed into another task. In terms of the supports, it's anything that uh, you as a teacher want to provide to your students to help them complete that task. So it might be setting up small groups. It might be setting up uh, a techno the technology tools if they're in an online environment. 
So here's a real, a really simple example of a learning design that focuses on a predict, observe, explain type sequence. So this learning design asks students to predict. They're given a scenario which or a problem, which is you'll see as a resource at the top left. They're asked to predict what's going to happen and they do that in pairs. They then observe what the actual um, act the scenario and how the actual scenario unfolds and then they're asked to explain uh, what they saw and how that differs from their prediction. So that in a nutshell is a very simple explanation of that learning design but you can see how it's simply presented on the screen. The way that we've um, used this learning design approach with teachers is in a range of ways. So today we're going to share with you an online tool, which is LD tool that we've developed, but you don't necessarily have to use the LD tool. Our teachers, uh, we've introduced this concept, this approach, this way of thinking to teachers, and you'll see on the screen there that they've, they've developed or use that approach either paper-based, paper they've either written handwritten notes as you'll see on the left, or they've represented it using, you know, just a simple um, drawing package to represent their design. However, like I said, we've actually got a LD tool, we've actually developed an, an LD tool so that you can present but also share create and also share that in an online repository. And we'll talk more about that today, but we might even get you to just use pen and paper and just think about a particular task um, and represent it using that framework. As I mentioned in the pitch, we've done a range of projects over our last 20 years. Um, and from the work that we've done with the LD tool, we've found that it's really supported teachers. Uh, as I mentioned before, it, um, it really helps make their thinking visible. It can help share their work. It serves as inspiration. It also encourages them to be very student-centered and it really gives them an opportunity to reflect because by drawing the diagram, present and creating that diagram, you really need to think through what it is that you want to do with your students. How is LD tool being used? Well, we have over 600 users worldwide and there's a range of, range of uses. Uh, for example, there we have colleagues um, in the Northern Europe who have embedded LD tool as part of their professional learning. Um, with what they do with higher education teachers. It's also used in a lot of postgraduate master's programs um, world, worldwide. But what, what, but what we've been saying is that we really need to know more about how teachers design. And what we've found is that teachers uh, when they, we, we found that teachers are, at, well, we consider them as designers because the work that we've done has identified that they really essentially focus on um, a, a teaching scenario, which we, you know, which is similar to a problem and working towards a solution in an iterative way, which then got us thinking from the empirical work that we've done is, well, how can we support teachers to, to really think about that, their pro that problem, to help them stimulate their, their thinking? And this is where we've um, come up with a, a, another tool, which is part of the ILDI uh, environment. So you can access this by accessing, um, if you've got a login to the ILDI environment, you'll see this as the generate the problem tool. But essentially, uh, I've just captured it in terms conceptually of, of what, um, what the tool, what this tool is about, is that it's helping you 
give yourself some questions and these questions have all been empirically derived from what we've found that teachers do when they design. And so we've sort of captured those key questions and provided them as questions to help others think about in more detail what it is when they're dealing with um, coming up with a, um, they, they want to design a teaching experience. And as I said, we, we think it's really important that um, teaching is considered uh, as design for the points that I mentioned, uh, I mentioned before. Uh, particularly that it really provides, I want to reiterate the fact that we think it offers a, a much more sophisticated appreciation about what teachers do uh, in that, you know, they're not only standing in front of a classroom or being online teaching, but there's a lot of thinking that goes on in preparation for that. They adapt on the fly as they're teaching, like Laurie and I may do today in this workshop based on the context that we find ourselves. And then um, they reflect after they've taught and then the cycle goes around for the next iteration of that. So that's in a very quick, nut, a very quick overview, uh, the work that we're doing. I'm going to shop, stop my screen. Uh, and, and that's, um, Yes, that's a, a very brief overview. I encourage you to have a look at the video that I've created. It sort of unfolds in, in a bit more detail. But, um, but for now, what, what if, if they are happy to take any questions and then uh, based on what you would like to do, our original idea was that we would get you to actually think of a very small task that you've been, that you have taught or you've designed and how would you represent that in our learning design approach using our learning design approach I have two questions sure. um, one question is very practical is it a, a free tool this is yes most definitely and oh. and I will put a caveat on that because it's a free tool it may, it's not, it may not look as sophisticated as the latest tools, mm. but, um, but it works. <laughs> and yes, you can sign up. Um, you can, I can put the, maybe I can put the link in um, yeah. the chat of how you can sign up. And all you need to do is enter some details and then an email will actually come to me and I'll approve it. So I might do that. And if you've got any other questions, please ask and may I ask Laurie to answer those questions while I put that in the chat. And my second question is regarding the online teaching. Uh, all of us are teaching uh, nowadays in Zoom. So mm -hmm. I wondered if you have any information of how to design a good um, Zoom lesson based on that tool um so i guess what how can you take a, a frontal uh, lesson yeah. as, as all days and yeah. actually put it on uh, bring it to a, 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 a digital but a zoom line yeah so what's That's interesting it. is that the tool was developed we developed the tool after we had been involved in a really large project where we looked at lots of examples about how people you were using technology um, in higher in university teaching um, use, where they were using all different types of technology. So they might have been using learning management systems, um, other kinds of tools, um, bespoke tools that maybe their own university had created. And that goes back, the project actually goes back to 2000. So because of the nature of Australia being a very large place, Australian universities have been using technology in their teaching for a very, very long time. And so this is what this project was about. So the idea of this tool is actually to be agnostic to technology. It doesn't matter what the technology is. And it's trying to help promote, and the concept of thinking, design thinking, is trying to help promote what, um, teachers think about what tools do I have available and what's what's going to work for what I what outcomes I want to achieve what activities I want to get the students involved in and that's why as Shirley was describing 
the supports area, those circles in the, the tool, are, are the way to articulate what tool you're going to use when. So when you think about Zoom, you can think about Zoom um, in terms of what it offers you in terms of the, the affordances of that particular tool. So what do we know? It's a live, it's, it's, it's a live technology. So it's synchronous, right? So it's, so it's, it's about thinking through what do you normally do when you have students together with the teacher or, or by themselves? And what do you ask them to do? Right. So what else do we, we know about the technology? It, we know that we can break into rooms, for example. We know that you can assign, assign them to rooms. So when you think through, when you're trying to think through how you support students, you often, when you're teaching face to face, you think about, am I going to create group work? And I'm, am I going to construct the groups because I want certain things to happen? Or am I going to allow students to construct, construct the groups themselves? What am, what's the task that I'm going to give if I send students off to you know in a classroom I send them off to a group <laughs> a table and I give them a task what what tasks do I give them you know thinking through if they were in the room to, with me what are the kinds of things I would be looking for when they're in the room with me if they're off for example in a group session what is what's the cues that I take when I'm wandering around the room and you kind of need to think through these concepts. How do I know when students are off, off track? What do I need to do to make sure I give them very clear instructions? When we're doing this through Zoom, we kind of have to think through all of these ahead of time because we need to provide scaffolding in different ways. We need to organize it in different ways. And I think what we are hoping, the concept of the design thinking and those kinds of prompts for your thinking and then how you can structure it by using the tool to sort of plan ahead is is what what we're hoping this this helps with um, we've all, a lot of us have had to just sort of switch to zoom and, <laughs> right away and so hopefully now as we're realizing in some place, places of the world we're going to have to continue to do this more and more the tool will support um, uh, it being done in, in a bit more of a thoughtful way. Shirley, do you want to pick up on anything there? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, just the point that uh, it's agnostic. It's not going to provide you with solutions. The idea is that this tool is a mechanism for you to use your, to document using your expertise, what you want students to do but it's not, it's not telling you, it's, it's not helping you or guiding you on whether that's effective or not. The idea is that it's a, a way of representing your thinking. And the background of that is that we know that teachers have a lot of expertise. And, but what they don't have is a range of tools to help them document and represent their thinking as designers would. So for example, in other design contexts, they have a range of tools like in engineering or in architecture. There's a lot of processes and a lot of um, tools like uh, briefs and things like that, that they have access to. What we've found from our research is that teachers don't talk about their work as design work and they don't they use a whole range of different tools, uh, but they don't think about their work as design. So this tool, LD tool, is a, a tool to really help you think about um, think about what you want, what you're designing for your students. I have uh, one question, please. I think, uh, I mean, I mean uh, uh, based on what you just said, uh, uh, that uh, uh, the tool allows the, uh, uh, the teacher to express uh, his expertise in uh, some more visual way, let's say? Yes, correct. So my yeah, question yeah. would be, especially with the online tool, is uh, and, and how do you think about uh, a collaborative designs? Because, I mean, I can share my content, but, but I think uh, what's important to share is uh, uh, the insights and results of a specific uh, uh, design. I mean, it, it, probably some designs have some affordances, advantages, or uh, uh, limitations, 
they are, a, 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 I don't know, a better for some age group and, the, and the, so how if, I mean, can the teachers uh, express and share these insights? I think, I think that's a really good question. And maybe I'll, if, if I ask Laurie to so, uh, verbally answer it and I'll show, I'll bring up the LD tool and I'll show you where you can document those ideas because that's exactly, you, you're exactly right. That's the whole idea to share these ideas, to share what, what worked, what didn't work, what if you had to design, if you had to implement that design again, you would never do again, or what really worked um, that you would encourage teachers, oh, look, I've, that really worked for me. Similarly, it's interesting. how, yeah. yeah see both how I can document my experience, but also, uh, I mean, how I can search for mm -hmm. things. So Shirley's going to bring up, Shirley's going to bring up the tool just now. And so, yeah, so we, um, it, when you sign up for the tool, you can create your own designs and you can choose whether you w are willing to make your design public mm -hmm. and shareable. So that means not only can you create your own designs and use it as a thinking and planning tool for yourself, but you can also search the designs where others have been in and made it public so that uh, you can get some ideas. So as Shirley was saying, the concept that learning designs can serve as inspiration for other people. Mm -hmm. um, and it, you'll get that additional information that Shirley is just about to show you where not only can you search for what other people have done they can express for you what worked and what didn't work but mm -hmm. you can all also um, have the ability to use someone else's design as a basis for your own or or similarly if you've created design in the tool and you want to adapt it you can copy it and and adapt it from from the original okay, that's nice. so let me let, let me show you. You can see my screen, yes? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So essentially, this is, this is the tool. Uh, well, this is the, your a, a design. So let me just go to, one, once you've logged in, you'll mm -hmm. see your designs here. So I'm just going to pick one that I prepared earlier. Um, and it's a, sort of like a test design. And it's the actual one that I used in the video of the how to use LD tool. So you'll see here that you can edit. And the key thing here is that this is the description where you talk about what the design is about and the intended learning outcomes. And here is where you actually document what the tasks, the resources and supports are. And then here, down here, you've got additional information. So here I've put, you add extra information such as advice on how to teach or implement this design, how this design could be scaled up and down in terms of numbers of students, etc. Any evaluative type data that you may have. So this is where you can say, from this design, I this is what worked and may, you know, this may not have worked well, or if you're implementing this, think about this. You can also provide some tips to teachers and say, well, if you're going to implement this design, you really need to prepare yourself by preparing these types of technology tools, etc. So you can provide whatever advice is that you like. Now, you once you've you've got that there, um, you can actually browse so or search so i'll just show you an example of the search so say for example an arbitrary example um you're interested in how people have used google docs in their teaching similar to the question before about how does how is zoom used yeah, in teaching. Let's, yeah. let's let's do google docs so you could search for google docs and you'll find different designs that come up so let me just look at this one. So this is from someone that has saved it and put that in the repository in our learning design tool. And you'll see there that that's their design and they've provided some description on, on that they're using um, Google Docs. And you go, okay, well, I would like to, hmm, I'd like to, I'm interested in that. So you can copy and edit that. So now you'll see that it's copied 
Mm -hmm. And so you've actually copied their design and now you can make whatever necessary changes you would like and that you will save that. So now in your designs, you'll see that you've got that copied design. It's nice. Thank you. So we don't go as far as collaboration in terms of two users in the system working on a particular design at once, but we do have the collaboration in terms of being able to share designs, being able to um, reuse designs, your own designs and other people's designs. So, um, so hopefully that um, has, has the ability to um, help from that co collaborative point of view. And I guess the big thing to think about in terms of technology, just to go back to the technology question, is that the technology in terms of the actual tools available changes over time. And so does the um, um, particular functions with any tool changes over time. So that's why it's kind of nice to be able to search on, um, I guess, the, the functions that are in technology and the different affordances in the technology, because, you know, you're, you know, you change universities, which means you might change learning management systems, or all of a sudden a pandemic happens and something you may never have used before, like Zoom is available to you. Um, so, so it's, it's trying to sort of help you, um, you can think about what do I want to do and what kind, what's the underpinning of the te technology function that will help me do this, no matter what kind of tool I have available or within the tools I have available. I'm just noticing that we're already at 11 minutes past six, surely. So this is um, workshop design on the fly. Do we want to spend five minutes just getting people to think through a task that they have either designed themselves lately or helped someone design? People are willing yes. to do that just with some paper. So we won't be um, as brave enough as to ask you to log to sign up for and log into the tool we'll let you do that at a, a at a later time but maybe if you could just think about and i'm going to share my screen just for a second oh okay oh, you're going to share the screen yeah. okay i'm just going to share just so that the um i'm just refreshing your memory about the concept that the task or the what you want the student to do is the central point, it's that square in the middle, okay? And that the resources, so that, that kind of content that you either want to provide the student to help them with that task or and or that you might get the students to create in the task is that on the left-hand side is the um, triangle. And the supports, is the student doing this is in pairs or in groups? are you going to give them um, uh, particular instructions to help them? Are you gonna provide them maybe with a template um, or examples that will help them in their, their task? Are you gonna ask them to do it in Google Docs? What technology you're going to use? Um, are you going to give some other kind of tool or, or direct them to something to use? So maybe just spend five minutes thinking about something that you've designed for your students or you've helped someone design for their students any kind of context university class a professional development workshop that you might have done um, if you also do some school or you're also in school teaching any kind of context i'll just get you to spend five minutes thinking through a design that you have been involved in
And a tip when you're doing this is keep it really brief. Try and think about what the key aspect of the task is and write a very brief statement. And the same goes for resources and supports. So examples of resources are, it could be lecture recordings, it could be readings. Examples of supports could be, you set up with Google Docs, you organise people in small, you organise your students in small groups. You have an online platform to help your students. How are people going? I think we usually do that, actually. Cool. Now it's more, um, it's more modeled or it's more conscious and therefore it's more uh, planned, I think. But we actually do that all the time. I think what is interesting is how the lesson is built as a total, yes. uh, you gave us an assignment, a uh, little assignment to just to plan the task and the resources and the outcomes that, and the support. But actually, how does it uh, build in a lesson and in a process? Okay, this is the interesting thing, I think. How do you and, build it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think you've made a really good point. By using this type of tool, it takes all the complexity of the learning environment or all these resources that you may have, etc., and it really gets you to simplify the design and work through conceptually. What is it that you want? The tasks. How do the tasks build on if they build on? Which are formative tasks, which then build on to the summative tasks? And what are the resources you're going to provide? And can some of those resources then help in other tasks? Or can students produce from by doing an uh, by doing one task that by do they actually the learners themselves create a resource that then is shared and reused in a later task? So it's just to help you with that thinking process. And by documenting it in that way, then you can share your ideas with someone else and you can show them visually. So it's a mechanism to help talk about your design. I have a question. I don't know if it's a good time to ask. Any time is a good time. <laughs> uh, when I started to... Uh, work on the little task you just uh, handed out uh, to us. Uh, I realized that um, um, I miss uh, one building block 
uh, at least in my in my opinion, mm -hmm. and this is uh, what I would call uh, assumptions. Mm -hmm. So I guess when I design uh, a teaching assignment or learning uh, assignment, I assume some things about my students. What is their background? Mm -hmm. uh, what abilities they bring to the classroom? And I wondered if you would think this requires a fourth block uh, in your uh, learning designer environment. And if not, where would you put it, this uh, information? Well, it's interesting That's my you question. say that. Yeah, well, interesting you say that because um, as Shirley said, this, well, this tool, we actually developed this tool 10 years ago now, Shirley. Um, a, bit, and a bit longer, a bit more than 10 years ago. The, the tool was a, um, that, that tool was designed to get, allow people to represent, okay? And that was before we did all the work that we have done in the last 10 or more years to understand how people actually design, quite apart from using any tool, We've done a whole lot of work to look at how people actually design. And that, that assumption that you just identified over time and time again, you, you, school um, K to 12, primary and secondary school teachers, university teachers overwhelmingly identify that they are influenced by who their students are. They think about who they've had as students in this class or subject or year in the past. They think if, they're, if they currently have students, they think about who, the, who those students are or the nature of those students in terms of the program that they're in, which is why we've evolved in terms of the, the set of tools that we think um, the teachers as designers need is to be able to prompt their design thinking when they're actually planning out their lessons. So I'm going to share again. Uh, on my screen, as Shirley showed you, can you see this again? Um, yeah. That there's a whole bunch of prompts that teachers sometimes inherently think about when they, they start to design or when they're going to redesign something that they've used before or, ha or a, a colleague has shared with them. But there's all kinds of things that teachers um, think about. And we notice in the work that we've done that sometimes uh, more experienced teachers just naturally um, think through these things as they begin to and continue to design. And more um, early career teachers po possibly need some more explicit prompts and we have put them down as, as questions to get them thinking about who am I designing this for? What am I actually trying to do here? What are the learning outcomes um, that are going to, are, are appropriate for this particular learning experience? Um, what do the students bring with them when they come into this learning experience? Um, what have I done before when I'm trying to teach this that has worked or hasn't worked? Um, to help, you know, prompt all of that. What, it, what am, as a teacher, maybe I'm interested in trying something new. I've never had to do, use Zoom before. So, so what do I need to know? Um, uh, in order to, to use this particular tool, or someone has told me about a particular pedagogical strategy they, they've used, and I, you know, maybe it's problem-based learning or inquiry learning, maybe I haven't used that before. What do I need to know um, and find out about before I can come back and continue to flesh out the, the design? So you can see, um, and this is a conceptual representation of that problem generation tool that Shirley was referring to in terms of the ILDE environment um, of Divinian's team in, uh, in Barcelona. Um, so I guess what we're suggesting is that there's, there might be multiple tools as a designer that you might use. One might be a thinking tool 
and might one might be a documenting tool and you might be going through th between multi multiple tools mm. anybody else want to offer any um, questions or um, reflections on what you've just been through in terms of trying to document a design I'd like to hear a little bit more, if it's possible, on your end, on how um, the task part uh, on, and how everything relates back to the task-based approach. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Because I'm recently involved in some task-based approach projects, so I'm curious about, and I'm thinking using your uh, uh, conceptual framework in my study. So can you say a few more words about task-based approach? and? And also, if the platform, if I go online into the platform, will I, will I find some materials about how, how I can connect the task-based approach uh, with your, um, uh, this very nice uh, LD uh, conceptual framework? Thanks. I'm just checking that I'm not, not on mute because I've been told to get off mute a couple of times today already. <laughs> um, uh, I guess, uh, um, just to clarify in terms of what we're referring to as task-based approach. So we're taking a, a task-based approach to design. Um, just clarifying that, are you referring to a task-based pedagogical approach for your students? Are you yes. Talking about, okay. okay uh, I'm, so, I'm, I'm working on a project where we design a, a task-based approach, a, okay. a task for our language learning students, Hebrew learners. Uh, right. with a mobile phone outside of class in formal learning and we were uh, we are looking we are interested in uh, incorporating the task uh, based approach now I'm thinking how can we also you know uh, um, harness your uh, specific mm -hmm. uh, platform because it looks really um, like matching yeah so I guess um, there might be some multiple possibilities here so firstly um, I'm not entirely sure and surely may you know more than I. There may be examples of task-based pet learning designs in, in the tool that have been offered by others, so it might be have, worth ha having a look. I think what um, maybe the, the tool might do from it, if what you're trying to think about is that um, the idea of what we've taken a task-based approach to design is basically we use the task or as, or what the teacher is asking the student to do. So in other words, this, the, the learner's activity as the central point of the design. So rather than starting from um, an idea of, I've got this content that I want to teach, um, or I know of these, you know, this great video that's perfect for this topic, okay? You, you, you start from the premise that what do I want this, the students to actually do, engage in? Okay, what is the learning activity? You might even think about it, and, and certainly I know how Sue Shirley and I teach when we design our own university subjects. We think about what are, say, the three big assessments, assessment tasks, the, the three big formative learning, uh, uh, um, summative learning uh, assessment tasks that we want to do, and we build that up because that's the culminating activity and how do different ta learner tasks get to that. Um, so it's sort of thinking through about putting the learner at the center and what they do at the center. So from a task-based pedagogical approach, you can sort of use that same concept of about thinking about what is the, the task that you're going to give the students and you, you possibly could even use the tool as a way of getting the students to plan yeah. out once they have a task, get the students yeah. to plan out how they're actually going to, um, I guess, complete engage in the task and what resources do they need to draw upon. So they could even use the tool um, as a support in the task. Yeah. So, um, that sort of started a really big conversation and some really big ideas. And Ishe is going to say, "Now we have to come come back now." Well, but uh, yes. <laughs> um, I think it just sort of suggests that the possibilities are kind of endless. <laughs> I 
and yes, and we do need to reconvene in the main <laughs> yeah. assembly room. So hopefully we've introduced you some interesting concepts about design um, that you can use in your own design and when you're working with others in design, hopefully um, uh, some tools, both in terms of the, the, the uh, approach and the actual tools that um, after this session, please feel free to jump on them, give them a try. And um, as Shirley said, we'd yeah. love feedback. So that would be great. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've provided my email in the chat. And so please, look, uh, please feel free to email us if you have any more questions. Given the mm -hmm. short amount of time, we hope we've just stimulated your interest <laughs> Uh, in our work. It was very, very interesting. Thank you thank so much. Thank you all. Oh, thank thank you. you all for joining us. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you very much. Super interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.